What's up, everybody? Wait, hold on one second. So, my name's Lisa. Most of you know that, but in case you don't. Ooh. I love using that. Florida water. All right, so. How's everybody doing? So, let's see what's going on. What's going on for the collective today? Ooh, this heartache. What is going on here? All right, there's like, I'm hearing that song, Listen to Your Heart. Okay. Um, this is heartache holding you back. Okay. The, 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 the divine wants, wants, this to change for you. Okay. All right. Listen, you guys, I'm feeling like this is connected to, um, this twin flame journey. Okay. For many of you, possibly not everybody. Okay. But th this is, this is healing. This is about, um, or this is suffering. This is heartache and loss. Okay. This is grievance. This is, um, somebody's not talking about their heartache. Okay. And, and I want to tell you something, you know, everybody experiences this heartache. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm even hearing the word shame. Okay. But this, this look, this wants to, this wants to heal. Okay. The divine wants you to heal this. Okay. The wheel is turning. You're the only one that can change this for yourself. Okay. It's, it's about what you're choosing. Yeah. See, look, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this is the four of cups. So it's like this says discontent and boredom. Okay, so I'm hearing withdraw. Like somebody's withdrawing from this says re reduce and rejoice in celebration. Look, here's this tower. Here's this empress. All right. Let me just talk about this. So this week. Uh, I was talking with a friend of mine. Okay. She's, she's so wise. All right. I, I really admire her. She's just a beautiful, beautiful human being. Okay. And, um, I'm able to bounce things off of her and she just listens to me and I can be super expressive and, and honest, you know, um, you know, like, because when, when you're, um, on this journey of spiritual enlightenment. Okay. Not everybody really gets you, you know? And, um, anyway, so I was explaining just like everything in regards to my twin, my twin flame journey, you know, because, um, there's been a lot of confusion. Okay. You're like, you're not alone in that. Okay. There it's, it's been crazy. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to be very honest, you know, when I was first awakened, it was when I met, um, my counterpart. Okay. And, you know, I had a very, supernatural experience. I mean, it was like there was a tremor happening. Okay. And then when, when we, when we locked eyes, all right. And it was like, as if like time stood still, it was like going in slow motion or something, but like everything was breaking and, or like, shaking and, um, the floor was shaking. And I remember like leaning back on my desk, like to, you know, be, be still or to, you know, so I wouldn't fall over. I mean, I was in heels. I used to wear really big high heels and, um, like tall, you know? And so, so, uh, and I just like, and when it stopped, okay. I like looked around. I was so confused because I didn't understand why nothing was broken. Why nobody else was like, can you believe there was just a tremor in freaking Florida? You know, like nobody was saying anything. And I just, I was just so confused. And I remember just sitting down going, Oh my God, I'm never going to look at that guy again. Okay. So Anyway, long story short, okay, so that started my spiritual awakening, okay, or reawakening, you know, because it's always been there, it just kind of like got, got, you know, like I've always been aware, 
but it was just like kind of suppressed there for a few years, you know, because when I was a, a, a child, I was very aware. Um, you know, I remember like talking to fairies and talking to my angels and, um, geez, I'm getting like all these interruptions. You see this? This is like, okay. So, and anyway, all this stuff started happening again, you know, like in my apartment, like the TV started coming on, lights started coming on. I started having, um, all kinds of crazy things happening in my dream space and, and I'm just keeping everything very, very brief, you know? And so this, you know, this, this guy and I, like, we had like a connection unlike anything that I have ever experienced in my life. I doubt that, I mean, I don't know, maybe I will experience this again, but you know, we would be talking and like, sometimes like we would realize like, we weren't even talking out loud, like, or I would answer him, but he had really only asked me in his head, you know what I'm saying? Or vice versa. And it was just very, um, and then I remember the first time that I kissed him, you know, and, uh, it was very like, it was like, we came together as like a DNA spiral, you know, like we were going, you know, up. And I remember when it stopped, um, you know, like I couldn't even stand straight. And I remember like walking with him and, you know, he, he, I mean, I was like walking sideways, like into, I couldn't even walk straight. And he just like gently pulled my, my shirt, like pulled me back over, like next to him. And, and, you know, he didn't, he didn't ever say anything. Like he didn't make fun of me or anything because you know, this, this guy asked me how like every day for a year and I kept saying no. And I can't even believe that I said no for so long because he's literally like my dream man. Okay. Like he's the most beautiful man I've ever seen in real life, you know, and just, just perfection. He had the most perfect smile and, and laugh and, uh, it was just a beautiful, beautiful experience, my knowing him. And while he was in my life, you know, he had wanted immediately to, to be my boyfriend, but there was a huge age gap amongst other things. Um, and I was very insecure about it and what people would say. And I assumed that his mother was probably my age. And, um, I was just like, you're going to like talk to your mom while you're here living with me. Like it, it was just like too much for me to handle. And I, I, I just, you know, I really, anyway, told him to like find a girlfriend his own age. Okay. And you know, this was what it was and that was it. And it was, and we never really talked about our emotions after that. Okay. He did get another girlfriend. Well, we couldn't stay away from each other because that's just the dynamic of the twin flame connection. Right. And so, um, but I never really openly expressed like how I felt about him from the moment I met him, my life was turned upside down and, um, he made me want to be a better woman. And, you know, at the time I was like, had all these different guys on, on, you know, they would like call me and want to take me out and stuff. And, and I didn't, I didn't, you know, there was a couple guys that I would talk to. There was a couple of guys that I would actually go out with, but for the most part, I was like, I was just coming off of like losing my six closest people in my whole entire life in a 19 month period. You know, I met him like, I don't know, two months later. Okay after the last person passed away. And it's like, I wasn't, I wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? Like I was really thrown off my, my rocker there for, for a long time. I was, I was coming from a very tortured place. I was, my heart was broken. Okay. Everybody that understood me was, had crossed over. And, um, anyway, he, we, we had this thing for a long time, for a couple of years. And, and, 
I'm just progressing in my life and I'm healing and I'm doing all these things and I'm becoming stronger and healthier and just feeling amazing. I got in some in amazing shape and I'm feeling good and I'm making more money than I've ever made. And, um, he's, uh, going to come back to me. <laughs> like he's, we've, we've gone through everything and we decide like, we're going to be together outwardly. And, you know, he calls me and says, I'm coming, babe. I finally did it. You know, I told her, get ready. I'm, co I'm coming. And, um, that was the last time I ever talked to him because he passed away the very next day. And, um, And what happened after that? Like, I even knew, like, he didn't call me that night. And I was like, eh, you know, not that big of a deal, you know. And the next day, like, I was a little bit concerned, you know, because I figured I would wake up to like a text or something, you know, saying something, but I didn't. And uh, I remember driving to work that day and um, being a little bit concerned, but I was like, well, he'll probably call me later, you know, just whatever. He's probably out late last night or something. And all of a sudden I got this like excruciating, like excruciating pain in my heart. Okay. Like I will never be able to describe it to anybody. It was like a heart attack or something. It was excruciating. And I just remember screaming, going, no, God, no. You know? And I said, please give me a sign that, that he's okay. And at that very instant that I said that out loud, a truck moved in front of me that said, I see you like I dot C dot you. Okay. So it's standing for something. And I just was like, Oh my gosh, like something's not right. Um, I got to work. I called him. He didn't answer. Um, every, my, um, my work associate that I was working with was like, Oh, I'm sure everything's fine. Blah, 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 blah. Okay call you, you know, um, again, like that whole day, like nothing. Okay. And, um, and then the following day I'm leaving for work again. And, um, there's a white feather, like right outside my door. And I just, I just, I just knew, you know, and, um, but I was just, but I didn't know. And, uh, so I'm driving to work again and I'm on the highway and I try to call and there's no answer. I had tried to call, like, I don't even know how many times I'd text and, um, and then like a little while later, I get a phone call from an unknown number and I was kind of like expecting because he had told me that he had ended his relationship. Right. So I was like kind of expecting like some backlash because I know like I was just expecting backlash. Okay. So from other people. And so I just figured this was going to be my, my first, um, cause this person, whoever they were on the other end was, didn't say hi or anything. They just said, who is this? And I was like, well, who is this? You called me. And, um, she told me her name and she asked me if I was a friend of, you know, my counterpart and his, his girlfriend. And I was like, no, but I'm a friend of my counterpart. And, uh, anyway, and I said, is he okay? And she was like, no, he's dead. Like, I mean, just like that. So heartlessly, and I, I mean, I almost crashed. I was on the highway and I almost freaking crashed. And, um, I, I don't even, I don't even know how I got to work, but I got to work and I was just like dumbfounded. You know, again, I told the person I work with, you know, what happened? And she was like, no, no. She's like, call, call his number again. And I called, I called, I called him again. And that, that person answered the phone again and was like, I don't know what to tell you. Like she was so nasty. And because of the way or the manner of our relationship, 
I've had to, I've, I've carried this shame about it, you know? And I didn't allow myself to properly grieve the loss of, of my experience. And it's really been blocking me because it, it, it not only like blocked my heart, it also made me doubt my intuition. And it stirred up all these in, insecurities because there was like just a lot of rumors and gossip going on around me. And, and, um, and I wasn't as confident then as I am today, you know? And looking under, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I was just very insecure about it, you know, because people don't want to believe that it was true, you know? And, you know, you can't talk about these kinds of connections with everybody. Every Like, if you've never experienced it, like, you literally don't know what the hell we're, we're talking about, you know? And you don't know it until you know it, you know? And um, so in talking with my friends and just like really being open and honest and just like realizing that that was my block, that, that I had been not standing in my truth by like not talking about that. Like these connections are magical. Yes. They're meant to, to hit you in all of your deepest spots to, um, heal your soul. Okay. That's, that's the reason why you meet your person. You know, at least that's my truth. Okay. That that's what my, that's what he's done for me. Like I am a completely different person all because of him. I don't know that I would have been, no, I, I, no, I know Nobody else, nobody else did that for me. Um, I mean, I am just all around a completely different person, you know, because of my experience with him, because of like walking this path. So then again, they say like, you only get one twin, right? Okay. So there goes my, my, uh, my insecurity. This is also getting ignited, you know, in his passing. And, and I get really upset with, with, with God, because I'm like, here I am. I'm like changing for the better. I'm doing everything right. How can this happen? What does this mean? And like, it really made me, um, I got totally depressed. And when I mean depressed, I mean, I'm talking like I gained 60 pounds. I stayed in freaking bed. Okay. I was ordering pizza and stuff like that for the kids. And like that, that was it. Like I was, I was down and out. I, and at also around this time, you know, I got like, I had a huge falling out with the person I lived with. And, um, so my job ended, thank goodness. I had like some money saved. So I got to, um, I got to, you know, grieve. I I mean, I was, I was down and out. I I was just like, I didn't, I did not understand this experience. And uh, I didn't know what the hell got, like that made seven people. Okay. Everybody that I truly loved and cared for was gone, crossed over. And, um, I had never felt more betrayed and more alone Okay. And I was just trying to make sense of everything. And, and, um, the only thing, I mean, I wanted to give up and I couldn't, I couldn't give up because it's like, I know that anytime that I've been down and out, okay. Anytime that I felt like this, I've grown from that experience. Like, it's like, um, I've had to, it's, I usually have a mustard seed around my neck. Okay. It's in my bed. I took it off last night. And, um, but 
and I couldn't give up. It's like I had known like so many times I had been down and out and it was like just this little amount of faith and effort towards making my life better. It always had become better. And there was like this huge gained perception of my life, you know, that was just this positive perception. It was just, um, my faith, you know, it's, it's like, it always came down to my faith. And, um, so I started asking God to show me my lesson and to show me what I was supposed to see. And what I found, like, because what I truly believe and what I know in my heart is that I'm a twin flame and that I am one of the 144,000, the first 144,000 sent here to help the world wake up and go through the awakening process. And how, and how that happens is, is through your inner healing. And I have been through so many experience, experiences and gotten to the other side and like healed from them and grown from them and and um, not to say that I am like 100% healed or anything, but, you know, I've, I've walked through a lot. Um, we're at this other phase, okay? So I start living again, you know, I start trying to live again, you know, I've, 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 talk to a couple of other people, you know, I've, um, been confused. I've could have, I've even like, you know, wondered like, is this the person? Does it change? Like, you know, is this my twin? You know, some people even said that, um, he would come back and find me again. You know, all I know is that when I was a kid, I used to have these dreams and, uh, there was this man that used to come <laughs> like in my dream and he'd always be in a tuxedo and he would dance with me. Oh my God. And I didn't know who this person was. I had never seen him before in my life. Okay. And, um, I know when I, uh, when I met my counterpart, it didn't hit me at first, but it did eventually that, it was his face. So over the last like couple of years, you know, um, since his passing, it's like coming up on four years now. Uh, I, I've met a couple other people, you know, I've had a, a few other people like show up in my dreams and, and that's, that's what happens. It's like, we get like soulmates or whatever, you know, it's like all these and, and it's, it's been confusing. I've met other people that I, I also have a spiritual connection, not like what I've had with my, my counterpart, but, um, definitely, uh, a spiritual connection. Okay. I've had them like show up and sing love songs to me, like playing the piano. I've, you know, just a lot of supernatural experiences. You guys know. The whole point of telling you all this is that well, you want to talk about pain. I understand the pain. All right. The lesson is for you to work through it and heal it. Okay. That's why it's there so that you can heal because you know why? Because your primary purpose is to help others, to help others grow and to gain their dependence on their higher power themselves. Okay. Because God is within you. All right. You are. Somebody's not talking about their heartache. The only thing that I want to do is, is heal and like help other people heal and learn to trust themselves, learn to trust in the universe, God, whoever you want to call it. These days are over, but it has to be your choice. And it's not just about choosing not to be 
unhappy anymore. It's about taking the action to change this. Okay. Yeah. It's it, most of the time. I know for me, it has taken more guts than I ever knew that I had. Okay. But it's the whole reason why I'm not where I was. I'm not settling for this life. And if you want to settle for your, this life, like that's on you. Okay. But it's not because your twin isn't showing up or blah, 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 blah. It's not. It's because you're choosing to stay like this. Look, unknown territory. Nothing feels the same. Possibly you don't even feel your counterpart anymore. Or maybe you do. Maybe it's it's overwhelmingly, you know, I've had moments where, like, I felt my, my person, like, literally, like, I've gotten up and, and getting something out of the refrigerator. It's early in the morning. And I've literally felt my person behind me, like, like, where I could see his foot, like, right next to my foot, you know? Like, his bare foot, like, in the morning, like, like he was behind me. Okay. I I haven't talked to him either. What are you what are you going to do? We all have to go through this process of healing and growth. It's like they have to decide just like we had to decide. And in the meantime, it's like get a life. <laughs> and I'm saying that with love. Okay? Do something you've never done before. Do something you've always wanted to do. Just be true to yourself. If you keep on doing what you've always done, you're going to keep on getting what you always got. I'm hearing, I'm hearing T.I. So live your life. <laughs> Look, in silence, peace prevails. You're going to know what to do. Look, you see the, the owl on her shoulder? You know what to do. You're resisting it. Look, reflect and redirect your, en your energy. And walk in beauty. I don't know. I just saw that. This is about this phase right now. Okay. This phase, this whole phase of the twin flame journey is about independence. It's about finding balance within yourself. Okay. It's about knowing that you're whole all by yourself. It's about understanding that you are one with God in every, everyone. Look, soulmate relationship. New romance with spiritual basis with a spiritual basis is here for you now. An unforeseen windfall of new abundance comes to you now. Worthiness. Look, worthiness, empowerment, and stay optimistic and accept heaven's help. Let go. You don't have all the answers and you're not meant to. This is about walking in true faith and dignity. Being true to yourself. You think that yourself wants to freaking be sad and depressed? No, fuck no. At least mine didn't. Mine doesn't. I'm so sick of being sad. I've been sad all my fucking life. <laughs> and I'm not being sad anymore. I'm finally like living for me. And, and it's like, because it all started with making choices that were best for me. Like, like yeah. Has it disrupted um some relationships, you know, with family and friends, has it ended relationships? Yes. Okay. But you know what? I'm not doing anything wrong. Look, make a wish. Do you see all these good cards? This is what's, it says, this is a magical moment. Make a wish and enjoy its manifestation. Tranquility. It's like chill. Take it easy, man. Woman. This is, I want you to look at this card. Okay. Because there's a reflection here and in the reflection, the horse is just a horse. Okay. The unicorn is just a horse, but over here. So it's like, you can either believe in the magic and see it, or you can just like tell yourself you're crazy or something. Okay. All you got to do is believe, believe. 
like you are the master of your universe. You know what I mean? Like you are the creator. Walk in beauty. Find out your truth. The whole other thing I was telling you about, like me meeting with my friend and talking to her and like really being open and honest about that is because that's also the phase. There's, there's a, there's a reason like right now, if you're feeling sad, it's because there's a, there's a, there's a, um, a worthiness issue that you're healing. Okay. You're, 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 you're uncovering your blocks. Okay. And where you have to put forth work and effort. Like, do you think that, that me, um, being stuck in bed and like 60 pounds overweight. It's like, I, like my life totally, I mean, I could st be still be there. Okay. I have to make a choice every single day. Okay. When your brain starts like telling you bullshit, tell that bitch to shut the fuck up. Make a wish and, and fucking believe that you can have it all. Look at all these good cards. Treasure chest. An unforeseen windfall of new abundance comes to you now. Soulmate relationship. New romance with a spiritual basis is here for you now. I've, we've been talking about this, okay, for like oh, over a year, around a year at least. There comes this point where we both have to cross this threshold, they're telling me. It's called a threshold. Alone. We both have to make the choice, okay? regardless of who's going to be on the other side. Release the outcome. Live your life in the moment today. Take control. Take control back over your life. Like, and just be happy and enjoy what you have. Okay. Gratitude will move you through like fucking mountains, dude. I I'm not even just to breathe. Like it has gone, gotten, I have been there. I, sometimes I still go there where I just have to be where I'm just grateful for the awarenesses that I've gotten, what I see, what I see today, I'm a completely different person. And if that's all this journey brings to me is that I've changed and I've gotten to heal from my past. Okay. And I get to help others and show them how to do it. Like show them that it's even freaking possible. Like, hell yeah, that's, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I feel like that's amazing. But I know that I feel like we're being prepared for the next level. And that next level is to take that awareness, okay, of like yourself and your, you are in, you are the only one that, that has the power over your happiness, okay? Nobody else is responsible for your happiness, okay? Understanding that everybody has their own shit, okay? Learning how to accept people as who they are and for what they are, all right? And then, like, the next phase is, like, learning how to uh, co-create with another, you know? Like, without... <sighs> What, what, what is the word? It's like without, um, just any kind of restriction, who know, like whether or not it lasts forever or it lasts one night, you know, it's like, <sighs> yeah, see, look, empowerment, worthiness, look. You see this? Rest, okay? Because things are about to pick up, okay? You're learning about, it says you're more powerful than you realize. It's safe for you to be powerful. Yeah, that's the other thing. There, there's a lot of people that have this, and it's because you you don't feel worthy. Okay, but let me tell you, like, you are a powerful ma manifester. Everybody is. It's just about whether or not you choose to believe it. Listen, I'm not staying fucking sad. I want to do everything. <laughs> I want to be everywhere. I am redefining the aging process as we speak. Yeah, look at this. Look, self-forgiveness. Like some of you, 
I mean, it says, let go of old guilt and remember that you're God's perfect child. I mean, that's the bottom line. Do you understand? Like, that is the bottom line. I don't want to say that it doesn't matter, but just like see it. Okay, so, so who cares? So you made like a billion freaking like mistakes, okay? They happen so that you could learn and grow and heal from them. Not so that you could sit around and sulk and feel sorry for yourself, okay? And feel guilty and like poor me. No, they happen so that you could heal and grow and learn from them so that you could show other people how to heal and grow and learn from them. Listen, you don't know what you do. Like, it's like once you see what you're doing, okay? It's not that you have to go around and like, apologize to everyone. You just stop fucking doing what you're doing. You show up different. You don't have to say anything. Just prove it. Just like let your action show it. I don't know. For for me, I do know. I I heard my friend say, Lisa, you're the only one that could know. She used to always say that anytime I said, I know, I don't know. To be like, Lisa, you're the only one that could know. <laughs> but all I know for me is that I'm just like trusting, you know? I'm actually not even thinking about anyone coming into my life or when I'm going to get married. I never really thought too much about getting married ever, really. But I'm just kind of experiencing life. I mean, I've never been this Lisa before that's so free and confident and just like willing to experiment with life. And I'm kind of enjoying it, you know? And if I want to go out on a date, then I'll go out on a date. But, you know, it's like... I don't know, you know? It, I've never done anything like that, you know? It's like usually like you go on a date and then I'm like in some relationship for the next freaking, you know? Like that's what I've like, and I, it's just like, it's not even that. It's like, you know, most of the time, like, I just, like, would sleep with people and then they become my boyfriend instead of, like, you know, I deserve to go out and get to know each other. Like, I, I want to have that experience of getting to know people, you know, and allowing people to get to know me. Yeah, look. Rest and make a decision. Like, you know, like that meme, like which wolf are you going to feed? You know, there's like the good wolf and the bad wolf and there's only one piece of meat, you know, which one's going to, which one's going to survive. Okay. It's, it's the one that you feed. Your mind starts going, tell that bitch to shut up. All right. This is, this is done. I love you guys. Bye.